Hello everybody and welcome back to another EP video. Many of us are wondering, and rightfully so, if this last election, one of the most tumultuous and consequential in American history, and not to mention the last four years of constant political turmoil, were outliers or if they represent the new normal. One major challenge for journalists and pundits who have covered politics for a long time, most of the mainstream media, is that their sense of normal is often reflective of an era that no longer exists. The politics of the post-World War II era, one marked by stability, has been slowly, then seemingly all at once, completely upended. The Democratic Party controlled the House of Representatives for 40 straight years from 1954 until 1994 and Democratic control of the Senate lasted uninterrupted for 25 years from 1955 to 1980. And then finally, from 1952 until 1988, Republicans won 7 of 10 presidential elections. This is the era in which most prominent journalists and politicians today were raised. Since 1994, however, the House has flipped control three times, 2006, 2010, and 2018 and control of the U.S. Senate has shifted power five times since 1994. In other words, most Republicans who worked in politics before the 1990s had never been in the House majority, and few Democrats had much experience working in the White House. Today, most of those who work in politics don't know of a time when control of the House, Senate, and or the White House was not up for grabs, and that includes, of course, the people who are currently in Congress. In the Senate, there are only six members who were elected in the pre-1994 era. GOP Senators Chuck Grassley from Iowa, Richard Shelby from Alabama who was a Democrat from 1986 until 1994, and of course Mitch McConnell from Kentucky, as well as Democratic Senators Patrick Leahy from Vermont, Dianne Feinstein from California, and Patty Murray from Washington. In the House of Representatives, just 27 members, 22 of them being Democrats, were elected in the pre-1994 era of the permanent Democratic majority. Only 87 members, or 20% of the House, were elected during the relatively peaceful time between 1994 and 2006, when Republicans kept hold of Congress for five straight elections. So that means that 80% of the House has been elected since 2006, when control of the House of Representatives has changed three separate times. President Joe Biden, of course, was born and raised in the era of congressional stability. It was a time where politicians could play the long game, building relationships and goodwill that would convey year after year, one congressional session after the other. Today, however, politics is a smash and grab. Get what you can for the short time you are there. In theory, more volatility should produce more strategic thinking. After all, if you know that your time in the majority is limited, you want to make sure that you don't permanently undercut the power of the minority. This has been the thinking behind keeping the filibuster in place. But that also requires a degree of faith in the other party that is not there today. For many Democrats, the attack on the Capitol on January 6th of this year only served to deepen their distrust of their GOP colleagues. After all, if a majority of Republicans were willing to throw out the Electoral College results, the Democratic thinking goes, why would we expect them to play by the rules once they get into the majority? That being said, if there was an outlier election over the last 20-25 to 25 years, it was the 2008-2009 to 2009 era. Barack Obama's 365 Electoral College votes were the most captured by any winning candidate since 1996. That year was also the only time this century when a newly elected president had any congressional power. In 2008, Democrats picked up 21 House seats. But in every other presidential election won by a non-incumbent candidate, 2000, 2016, and 2020, the winning candidate's party lost seats in the House. In fact, 2008 was the first and only time since 1980 that the winning non-incumbent presidential candidate's party did not lose seats in the House. In every election since 2012, we have had to unlearn many of the lessons from that era, like how much faith we put into the idea that a growing Latino population would automatically translate into Democratic gains, or how the margins that Democratic candidates would get in the future from white, blue-collar voters could not get any smaller than those received by an African-American man with the name Barack Obama. As we forge ahead into President Biden's first term, it's safe to say that it won't be as dramatic or chaotic as the Trump era, but that does not mean that it will be stable. In fact, political volatility has been a feature, not a bug, of 21st century politics. 
That is all for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please make sure to follow my personal Instagram and EP official on all social medias shown on screen and linked in the description down below. Also, make sure to comment your thoughts and opinions in the comment section and please hit the like button if you like the video as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching. Check out more content from my channel here and as always, tune in next time. EP out.